Well, I guess I'm supposed to tell you my name. My name's Caroline, um, and I'm from northern New Jersey. Uh, I was also told to start like that. Um, well, I, my father's from the Bronx. My mom is from northern Jersey. That's She won that battle. Um, and they met in the Peace Corps in Jamaica um, in 68. And my, this will all kind of go back to my art as well, but my father's work was creating a fishing cooperative um, in the southern side of the island. And his best friends, his people, were fishermen in Jamaica. My mother was in Kingston, uh, working in the school systems, creating a pre-K for all system like we have here in New York City. And they got together. They left their respective college partners for each other. Um, they came back to the city together, to the Bronx. They went to Hunter for their MSWs. They became social workers. Um, it was uh, then that my parents both kind of got jobs in the city, in Jersey City. Um, they wound up moving from the Bronx to actually north, even further north in Jersey to where we still have a cabin today. And my mom was a school social worker there. Um, but she hated it, it was super gendered. You had to wear skirts and all that jazz. And she quit <laughs> and she became a lawyer. She's been uh, working as a self-employed lawyer ever since. Um, they moved to Jersey City for her to get that degree. And that's why I live in Jersey City now, because my landlords are their friends from the 70s. They owned a house up the block from where I live now until I was about to be born. And then, you know, I went into suburbia. Um, and that's kind of where I was at until I was ready to move myself. So I've actually been in the apartment I live in for over 12 years. And it's my home and my studio. Um, as far as making art there, I've been making masks and wearables for over six years. I started making them for a dancer friend who called them hoods at the time. I was crocheting and making art installations using yarn and mason's twine and rope with a collaborator friend of mine who worked at the Children's Museum of Art. And we were taking over spaces, abandoned spaces. Um, and I was already working with a lot of crochet, a lot, and we started making installations that you would get in or swing from. And I think that kind of hit a spark for him. And so I started making these hoods for his performances. And he was a manatee. So we made, actually, it's funny that I'm wearing this right now because <laughs> his costume was a coverall and a hood. And uh, it was around that same time period I went to Iceland for an artist residency. And I was doing a lot of work of sewing through paper at the time and making collage work. And, but I always did in a very traditional cursory sense. I was knitting and crocheting in between. I'm very much somebody that needs to keep going in an artistic practice but I wasn't giving it value of my own. Um, but I started collecting the rope. I've always been somebody who is a, a sea comber and a collector of things, um, natural materials. And I really love plastic and unnatural materials in natural spaces, and I collect those. Either to throw them out or to use them. Um, so I started playing with the rope. It was actually Pussy Riot Solidarity Day, it was 2013. And another artist that was there was doing a lot of work on gender and um, power and threw a party uh, for the day and we were all to make masks. So I said, sure, I can just you know do this super quick. I'll just crochet it. And that was my original mask I made in 2013. And I just kept going and Funny enough, uh, somebody there had the same surname as me and came up to me and said, yeah, you know, like we're in Iceland. 
you know, our last name means Clan of the Olives. And I was like, you know, I did know that at some point, but I wasn't walking around with that knowledge. And I was like, oh, right. I mean, yeah, I guess there's some sort of like family history of being Viking or what have you. Um, and years prior, my grandmother died and my mom was adopted and we never knew her given name and I was told that she was adopted much later in life um, and that it was a very private thing for her. So regardless of my questioning, the answer was no, I don't know anything more. But I was with my grandmother when she died and it was my job to go through her things and I found my mom's adoption papers and I found her given name and I wrote it down in a book and I knew my mother would never be ready to talk to me about it until she was. So I never brought it up. And I guess that must have been almost three years after that point and I remembered it just came to me. So I was already doing research about McAuliffe and how I was a clan of the Olives and I was in Iceland and I was collecting all this rope and I was getting into this Viking history. And I was like, why don't I research the Swedish name of ours? And sure enough, I researched it and the Swedish side as well as the Irish side are Viking descendants. And I was like, oh, all right. So I'm gonna have fun with this. I'm gonna start researching Viking headpieces. And we all know the ones that with the horns, but I was actually doing some research on uh, Swedish side of things. And so I made a ton of headpieces that referenced those and just others I kind of built on myself. I used myself as a model. And I hiked one up a mountain for seven hours um, while wearing one. I left one at the top of the mountain that says, send me an email of you wearing this if you ever get a chance. I think it's been taken off the mountain since because I just recently spoke to somebody who hiked in. They said they didn't know what I was talking about. But I hope someone's enjoying it. Um, I gave one to the mayor of town. I work with some fishermen there teaching me, uh, they taught me knot skills and repairing nets. And so I gave them a headpiece. I don't know if they wanted it, but you know, I gave it to them. Uh, and so I really only left Iceland with three pieces after making about eight or nine. Um, I really wanted to give them back to the space. And I came home and I, I also made these whips. And I, some of my interest in, in the mass and the whips uh, was this concept of this performance of power, which is very much the history of Vikings. You know, there's this willful overtaking and performance and when in fact they died out pretty quickly. Um, so I was really interested in that concept of uh, physically looking powerful, but maybe being otherwise. And that's been an ongoing current in all of my work, whether I was carving walls or carving paper or creating litho like lithographs or silk screens. Um, it was always this concept of fragility and um, dominance or fragility and power. Um, how tough was the paper, how tough was my mark. Um, so I found it fun to actually physically perform it, to put things on. Um, also someone being a lifelong self-conscious person, it was great to obscure my face and then that gives you a whole bunch of other freedoms. As soon as your face is covered, you're not yourself in a lot of ways and you're not confronted with that image that you know. So. For me, it's, it's given me a lot of space to play with. And it was actually an emotional, ridiculous breakup that kind of transitioned making masks into performing in them. I was just fueled with rage. And I put on a mask and I put on a song that I wanted to dance to and I just started doing that. And I started posting that and that was over two years ago. And I just kept doing it and it's, seem to be a great vehicle for me if I'm upset or angry to dance it off and become something else. But I've noticed over the last two years that the work that I create is something that people want to be part of too. So that's been fun to welcome people into. I first started doing photo shoots about two years ago with a friend of mine um, and her partner at the time. 
Uh, and it's grown. So I've done photo shoots with eight to 10 people. I've done intimate shoots with just one or two. Um, I really like not only going back to this narrative of performance of power and this narrative, this like folkloric family narrative of, you know, my parents meeting in a fishing village and us being descendants of Vikings and me having all these realizations in Iceland um, to also uh, being, oh no, I forget my train of thought. Hmm. So these, uh, but oh, also creating the narratives themselves, like throw in a mask, throw in some clothes. What story can we tell now? Um, and I really like the concepts of otherness or being othered and place. So, I mean, being a weirdo or being given permission to be a weirdo and taking up space, I think is great. Um, I like doing it myself and giving myself the allowance to do it. Ooh, I just did that. And, um, but I also love the idea, which I wasn't ready for, was that if I do it, maybe other people will feel like they can do it too, which is definitely not something that I was thinking about. Although being an art teacher, I should have had some sort of awareness over that. But I just love it. I've done performances at um, like queer nights for pe like with people and friends. And I've, I've been shocked that people that are so maybe obsessed with their image are willing to first of all put on a mask, but that their reaction was freedom, you know, and so they were feeling the same thing I was, and I, and, um, I appreciate offering that, um, and that it's an open invitation for people, and if they want to put on a mask and put on some weird clothes, I'm open to do a photo shoot with lots of people, um, and I think it's just fun to keep telling the story, and to keep making things, and to keep having space to be ridiculous and um yeah i'm i guess it it goes back to putting things on like a performance but it also is a vehicle for you know being yourself as well um so with i feel freedom not only from image, but also freedom to move and to be and to operate much differently than I often do in my day-to-day -day life. Even though I totally have a lot of allowances being an art teacher, I can pretty much do anything I want and wear anything I want. Um, but it's still something different somehow. Um, so I guess that's, that's that. I don't know. So this is actually the original one that I made in Iceland for a Pussy Riot Solidarity Day. Um, so you can see it's kind of fashioned after an original mask that they were wearing, um, a balaclava. Uh, and I mean, it's since seen some days. There's some silver fringe on here. Who knows where that came from? But I can put it on for you. You can see the difference. So, I mean, it's heavy and it feels like rope and it still smells like Iceland. And I love the weight of it. Um, there is something to that as well. Um, I really like, now that I have this on, I remember. Um, I like feeling uncomfortable. Like I don't, I like that the work imposes a little bit on someone who's wearing it, like proves their willingness to put it on. I mean, which again, kind of arcs back to these other storylines, both uh, in the work, but also like the Viking thing, the, the uncomfortable around like not knowing information about my family, the, um, this false, possible like facade, um, yeah, or I guess there's some 
part of my work that I'm not always aware of, um, that there's this um, mystery. To me, I feel like I'm being completely out there. <laughs> I'm wearing a mask, right? So I don't know. Um, I know my girlfriend recently just got asked what I actually look like. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I don't have an, a picture of myself. <laughs> it's me in a mask. So yeah, I guess that is a follow-up needed. But um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I really do like the smell of it and the feel of it. And um, I like the decay. Um, but I also love the idea of using, a lot of my work has always been what is around, what can I use? Um, there is this ecological usage in both respects, like both of the space, but also um, using what's there. Um, so a lot of the other cording that I use is actually stuff that I've collected as an art teacher um, or from spaces that I'm allowed to shop from as an art teacher. And I still mainly look for things in thrift stores. And if I have to, I mean, a neon is always great in a hardware store. So some Mason's Twine is, you know, it's too good to pass up, but <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that. Oh, other masks. I can take, ooh. So this one's mainly of cord and mason's twine. So, but I was invited to make a red piece for a show in Chicago over the summer. So I kind of had to be specific about my materials for this one, but I love it because it's got that whole Spartan flair. Um, and this one is all recycled found things. It's just so weird. I love the eyelashes. Like, what is going on? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm always, I mean, I'm kind of shocked myself that it pours out of me. And I'm like, oh, okay. 